How to light and restart a rocket engine. Brought to you by the Surelight Torch Company. When it's sure better light, get Surelight. At the request of CR5149, who we will affectionately refer to as 5149, this primer on lighting and restarting a rocket engine has been produced. Lighting an engine has never been easy. Early American and Soviet rocket designers would send an Olympic runner to stand under the engine with a torch. They would send three, in case the first guy chickened out. As the fuel and oxidizer started to flow, the runner would jump as high as he could up the nozzle of the engine, thrust the torch into the combustion chamber, land, and then run as fast as he could. This system worked very well for the rocket engineers, but was not popular with the runners, and it was impossible to restart the engine once in space, as no one can jump that high, and there's no air to breathe if you could. When the crew on the rockets refused to spacewalk down to the engine with a torch, a better system had to be designed. Welcome and thanks for listening. We appreciate all of your feedback on how we can fine-tune our presentations to your style of learning and what subjects you would like to know about. A scholar by the name of SIAR5149 was wondering how we restart rocket engines. Let's get serious. Starting a bipropellant chemical rocket engine that is not hypergolic has always been a problem. The simplest rocket engines are pressure-fed monopropellant. You have a pressurized tank with a valve. You open the valve and run the reactive fuel over a catalyst bed which causes the fuel molecule to break down and generate heat and you have propulsion. The next simplest is a pressure-fed bipropellant engine with hypergolics. These are very common, like the SpaceX Dragon Capsule Reaction Control System. This RCS uses monomethyl hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide to produce thrust. They have carbon overwrapped pressure vessels with helium gas under high pressure to keep the fuel and oxidizer tanks pressurized. When the fuel and oxidizer is mixed, it ignites spontaneously. The Apollo Ascent engine was of this basic design. Very dependable, few moving parts, and almost always ignites. Watch our course on hypergolic rocket engines here to refresh your knowledge of this technology. But these chemicals are toxic and have a lower specific impulse than other rocket fuels, including plain old kerosene. Now expensive refined kerosene for rockets is called RP-1. For jet airplanes it is called JP-8. But kerosene is hard to light. Spark plugs won't work. Modern diesel engines use extreme compression, but this won't work in a combustion chamber open to the outside through the nozzle. So how do rockets and SR-71 engines use this more efficient fuel in their larger rocket engines when their fuel is not hypergolic? And how do they restart them? The Saturn V F1 engine used RP-1, but never had to restart. The SpaceX Merlin engines also use RP-1, and they do restart. If you look closely, through a camera, I hope, you will see a green flash just before the Merlin ignites. You can see this also when an SR-71 jet engine ignites. This green flash is due to a chemical called triethyl borane. Triethyl borane was developed for the first restartable rocket engine called the XLR-99. This engine was used for the American X-15 space plane program. The X-15 was carried to altitude by a B-52 bomber, then dropped, at which time it would ignite its engine. The XLR-99 engine used anhydrous ammonia for fuel and liquid oxygen peroxidizer. It had a turbo pump powered by the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide over a catalyst bed. This is very similar to the V2 engine designed by Werner von Braun, but the V2 used ethanol for fuel, which the soldiers kept drinking. Should have gone with the ammonia. Anyway, the fuel and oxidizer, once it was in the combustion chamber, required a hypergolic starter that would burn hot enough to ignite these chemicals. Once ignited, they would generate their own heat and pressure and continue combustion. The starter chemical chosen was this triethyl borane. You see the molecule above. And the chemical formula is C2H53B. This chemical is injected into the engine just after you start pumping the fuel and oxidizer. And it burns at an extremely high temperature on contact with oxygen from any source. This starts the combustion process. This chemical was used to start the SR-71 and A-12 jet engines, seen here. It was also used in these engines for the afterburners. The famous Saturn V used this chemical 
combined with about 15% triethyl aluminum, also very reactive, in its massive F1 engines. The Merlin engine by SpaceX uses the same mixture that the Saturn V did in its F1 engine. You will find that when a method works well in the space industry, it is often reused over and over again. In the early days of relanding the Falcon 9 boosters, one of them ran out of the starter fluid and crashed. You can only restart your engine as many times as you have this starting agent available. A small amount is sprayed into the engine just as the fuel and oxidizer start to pump. If this starter fluid fails to be injected, the fuel and oxidizer pumps must immediately be shut down. As a large amount of fuel and oxidizer building up and igniting all at once would be uncomfortable for the crew. I hope you enjoyed this brief primer on rocket engine ignition and restart. Thanks for listening. Patreon is almost ready. Like and subscribe to continue preparing yourself for a future in the space industry. And stay safe.